The morning sun cast its pale light over the city as John awoke with a start, his thin frame drenched in cold sweat. Another nightmare, always the same. He saw her face. He saw her face, heard her final words, felt her hand slip away into the abyss as the life left her eyes. It had only been a month since the accident, but to John, it felt an eternity. An eternity of empty days and restless nights with only his grief for company. Rising stiffly from the damp sheets, he shuffled to the small kitchen and put the kettle on. As the steam rose, so too did the memories, their Sunday breakfasts together, her laughter filling the room with light. Now, only silence and shadows remained. John sank into a chair, his wrinkled hands trembling as he fought back the tears. Not again. He had shed enough tears to fill an ocean, and still, the pain refused to lessen its grip. The shrill whistle of the kettle jolted him from his thoughts. John slowly prepared a cup of tea with hands that had forgotten their purpose. Sipping the scalding liquid, he glanced at the clock. Almost time for the daily ritual. It was the only thing keeping him tethered to any semblance of routine. The sole reason to drag himself from this empty house each morning. A trip to the cemetery to sit by her grave and speak to her as if she could still hear. As if she could still hear. As if in doing so, he could keep the last piece of her alive a while longer. Grabbing his worn coat and hat, John stepped out into the pale morning. A light fog hung in the air, clinging to his skin like a shroud. He walked the few blocks to the bus stop in silence, eyes downcast, lost in memories of happier times, now forever out of reach. As the familiar rumble approached, John shuffled forward and took his usual seat, the one right by the window, where he could watch the city pass by in a blur of gray. It was only as the bus lurched into motion that John became aware of the chatter coming from the back. Laughter, carefree and bright, cut through the fog in his mind like a knife. Turning slowly, he peered through the misting glass and felt his breath catch in his throat. There, in the seat right behind, her seat, sat a group of teenagers Boys with easy smiles and girls with shining eyes, their youthful voices mingling in joyous cacophony. But it was one boy, Tyler, who drew John's gaze like a moth to flame. He had her smile, her eyes, eyes that should never have gone dim, eyes that now only stared back at him in his nightmares, accusing, pleading, anger stirred in John's chest, hot and corrosive. This boy, this stranger, had no right. No right to sit there, to laugh, as if the world owed him nothing but sweetness. As if he didn't know the cruelty life could deal, the jagged thorns hidden beneath bright blooms. Rage swelled within the old man's heart, a black tide that drowned out all reason. His hands curled into fists, knuckles bloodless with strain. The boy's laughter pierced his ears, each peel a dagger twisting in old wounds. Memories assaulted John, her smile, her touch, her final moments fading to darkness as the life was crushed from her too. Young body. And this boy, this insolent child, dared to sit where she belonged, where her light and warmth should be, but was stolen away leaving John with only an endless night? With a guttural snarl, something within the old man shattered, primitive and vicious, a darkness long dormant now stirred, a darkness that knew only blood and vengeance. Before the screaming passengers could react, John was on his feet in a blur of motion, bony fingers wrapped around Tyler's throat as he was wrenched from his seat eyes bulging in shock. This is her place. John hissed, madness glinting in his eyes. You don't deserve to sit here. You deserve nothing. 
Tyler clawed at the iron grip, gasping for air. But it was no use. With inhuman strength born of grief and rage, John slammed the boy's head against the window once, twice. The sickening crunch of bone echoing through the bus. Blood sprayed the glass in a gruesome spray of crimson. By now, the other passengers had surged forward, pulling with all their might to free the teenager from the demented old man's grasp. With final savage wrench, John was torn away, leaving Tyler's mangled body slumped in a rapidly spreading pool of scarlet. Chest heaving, John stared down at the lifeless corpse with eyes that no longer saw a person. Only an obstacle to be destroyed, something primal had awakened in the darkness of his soul, a yawning chasm that could never be filled, a hunger, a madness, a need to make others feel as he did. Broken and bereft in an uncaring world, the screaming on the bus reached a crescendo as others rushed to aid the dying boy. But John was already moving, slipping past the chaos and out the doors into the misty streets. A new purpose stirred in his ravaged mind. These people, this city, had taken everything from him. Now it was his turn to repay the debt in full. Let them feel his anguish tenfold, know the same agony that clawed at his insides each waking moment. A shadow passed over John's eyes as he retreated into an alley, melting into the fog. A monster had been born in that moment of savage violence. And soon, this city would learn to fear the darkness that now lived within the old man's heart. His revenge was only just beginning. The morning sun cast an eerie glow over the crime scene as police swarmed the bus. Yellow tape cordoned off the gruesome aftermath, passengers still in shock being questioned one by one. But for Detective Marks, one fact was already painfully clear. They were dealing with something beyond the ordinary. No normal person could have committed such a savage attack with their bare hands. He surveyed the scene with a veteran eye, taking in every grisly detail. The boy, Tyler, lay in an ever-widening pool of blood. Skull caved in on one side, pinkish fragments of bone and brain matter clung to the shattered window above like grotesque confetti. Whoever did this meant to make it hurt, to inflict maximum damage with their bare hands. It reeked of primal unhinged violence. Kneeling beside the body, Marx frowned. Based on the wounds and blood spatter, the killer had to be incredibly strong. Far stronger than any average man. Could it have been more than one assailant, working in tandem? But the witnesses claimed it was a single attacker, an old man by their descriptions. Nothing about that added up, unless... Rising with a sigh, Marks turned to the driver. Any security footage that could ID the perp? The man shook his head grimly. Cameras busted has been for weeks. Budget cuts? Of course. Just their luck. Marks lit a cigarette, blowing smoke as his mind raced. One thing was clear. They were dealing with a killer unlike any. They'd faced before, and with no leads. It was only a matter of time before he struck again. Meanwhile, across town, the fog-shrouded streets lay empty and still. From his hiding place in a damp alleyway, John peered out with feral eyes, chest still heaving from the violence of the morning. Blood stained his wrinkled hands, flecks drying beneath cracked nails. A part of him knew what he'd done was wrong. But that voice grew fainter by the moment. All John could feel was the lingering thrill of the kill, the ecstasy of watching light fade from another's eyes. For the first time in weeks, the pain in his heart had dulled to a distant throb. His vengeance had begun, and the taste of blood on his tongue was sweeter than any nectar. As the adrenaline faded, 
A gnawing hunger took its place deep in John's gut. When was the last time he'd eaten? Days ago, perhaps longer. Time had little meaning to him now. Scanning the alley, his gaze fell upon a many stray, sniffing through trash. John crouched low, muscles coiling to spring. The cat never knew what hit it. One moment nosing through refuse. The next it was pinned beneath John's weight, mewling piteously as teeth sank into fur and flesh. Warm blood flooded the old man's mouth, and he tore ravenously into the small body with feral abandon. Bones cracked between his jaws, innards spilling free as the animal was devoured alive. By the time John sat back, licking the last crimson traces from his lips and fingers, nothing remained but a few tufts of fur. His hunger, at least, had been sated for now, but another thirst still clawed at his insides, one that could only be quenched through fear, suffering, and death. Rising unsteadily, John stumbled from the alley into the mist, shrouded streets once more. His senses had sharpened to an almost preternatural degree, picking up every subtle sound and scent carried on the chill air. Prey was near. He could feel it in his bones. Time to continue his work. A few blocks away, in a run-down apartment building, Amanda paced anxiously. Her shift at the diner started soon, but the dense fog rolling in made her uneasy. Still, she couldn't afford to miss another day. Not if she wanted to keep a roof over her head. With a resigned sigh, Amanda grabbed a coat and keys locking the door behind her. She hurried down the empty sidewalk, breath fogging in the cold, every small sound making her jump. A scuttling rat had her gasping heart pounding. Get a grip, she chided herself. It's just the weather playing tricks on your mind. Rounding the corner, Amanda froze in her tracks. A figure emerged from the mist ahead shuffling towards her with slow, loping strides. She could just make out hunched shoulders, wild gray hair, and a gaunt, pale face staring right at her. Every instinct screamed at her to run, but her feet felt rooted to the spot in terror. As the figure closed the distance, Amanda's blood turned to ice. It was an old man, yes, but his eyes. They glinted with something feral, primal, Something that had no place in a human gaze. A low growl rumbled in his throat, lips peeling back to reveal teeth bared in a snarl. This. This wasn't a man. It was a monster. With a choked sob, Amanda found her feet and bolted, the thing giving chase with inhuman speed. Her breath came in ragged gasps lungs burning as she fled blindly through the misty streets. A glance back showed the monster gaining, lips curled in a rictus grin, eyes alight with savage glee. This was no random attack. He was toying with her. Savoring the thrill of the hunt, Amanda's heart clenched in terror, knowing she couldn't outrun this beast forever as her foot caught on a loose stone, sending her sprawling with a cry of pain. She knew her time was up. The thing was on her, in an instant, pinning her writhing form to the damp pavement. Amanda screamed, thrashing wildly, but it was no use. With demented laughter, the monster leaned in to deliver the killing blow, jaws gaping wide to tear out her throat. Suddenly, Headlights pierced the fog ahead and tires squealed. The monster's head snapped up just as a car came careening around the corner, brakes locking with a piercing shriek. It swerved at the last second, sideswiping the creature and sending it flying with a howl of pain. As the car skidded to a halt, Amanda lay sobbing on the ground, body racked with shock. Hands pulled her inside the warm vehicle as sirens approached in the distance, through tear-blurred eyes, she caught one last glimpse of the monster rising unsteadily and loping off into the mist, 
howls of rage fading into the night. The city was on edge in the aftermath of the bus attack and subsequent assault in the foggy streets. News of the savage killings had spread like wildfire, stoking public panic. Who or what was this mysterious monster preying on the city after dark? At the police station, Detective Marks poured over case files long into the night. The witness statements from Amanda and the bus passengers painted a disturbing picture. An incredibly strong, almost inhumanly fast old man, displaying signs of acute bloodlust and savagery. It didn't add up by any standard definition of human. Unless. Marks pulled up old records of unsolved cases from the past decade. Disappearances, mutilated bodies found in alleys showing signs of savage, animalistic attacks. All carried the hallmarks of something feral, something not quite human. Could they all be connected to the same perpetrator? Lying dormant until triggered to emerge once more? A knock at the door. Jolted marks from his musings. Detective, you need to see this. The officer led him to the monitor room, where all the city security cameras fed live footage. On one screen, Marx froze in horror. It showed a grainy night vision view of a dark alley. Two figures entwined on the damp ground. One lay motionless while the other. The other was tearing into the body with its teeth and claws like some rabid animal, rending flesh cracking bone between jaws slick with blood. Marks leaned in for a closer look, bile rising in his throat. It couldn't be. But there was no mistaking that shock of wild gray hair or the inhuman speed and savagery of its movements. That's our guy from the bus and the other attack. It's the old man. A chill ran down Mark's spine as the full implications sank in. They weren't dealing with an ordinary killer. They were dealing with a monster. A monster that was growing bolder and more vicious with each new victim. They had to stop it, and fast, before the death toll climbed even higher. That night, as the fog rolled thickly over the city streets, John prowled the shadows with feral purpose. His wounds from the car had healed with preternatural speed, flesh knitting back together within hours. Now, only the hunger and bloodlust remained, an all-consuming madness that could only be sated through violence. Slipping between alleyways like a wraith, John caught the scent of prey up ahead. A young couple stumbled down the sidewalk, lost in each other's embrace. Perfect targets, oblivious to the darkness, closing in. John shadowed them, silently. Muscles coiled, saliva flooding his mouth as anticipation mounted. Finally, as the couple turned down a deserted side street, he struck. A blur of motion, and the man was torn away with a strangled cry, pinned beneath John's wiry frame. Fingers curled around his throat in an iron grip as the old man leaned in, bearing stained teeth in a feral grin. Please, no. The woman sobbed, fumbling for her phone with shaking hands. But it was too late. With a savage twist, John snapped the man's neck, tossing the limp body aside. Turning to the woman, he let out an inhuman howl that curdled her blood. She bolted, but John was faster, stronger. In seconds, he had her pinned against a damp wall, claws raking her flesh as she screamed. Hot blood spattered his face, only fueling his madness further. With a savage bite, John tore out her throat, gulping down the gushing crimson. By the time he sat back, licking the last traces from his hands, the woman lay dead at his feet the alley awash in carnage. John threw back his head and howled in primal triumph the moonless sky, the sound carrying for blocks. 
Let the city hear his victory cry and tremble. None could stand against the darkness that now lived within his bones. He was death incarnate, a shadow given flesh and fangs to rend the living. This city and all who dwelt within were his dominion, and he would paint these streets red before the end. The next morning, Marx arrived at yet another gruesome crime scene. Two more mutilated bodies, torn apart with such savage ferocity the coroner blanched. This was no longer an ordinary serial killer. This was something far more terrifying, far more primal. A true monster had been unleashed upon the city. As Mark surveyed the carnage, a chill went through him. The killings were escalating at an alarming rate, growing ever more brutal and depraved, and with no leads on the killer's identity or motive. It was only a matter of time before the death toll climbed higher still. They had to find this thing and fast, before it butchered the entire city. But how do you track down a monster? A pall of fear hung heavy over the city as news of the latest killings spread. People barricaded themselves indoors after nightfall, too terrified to venture out alone. The police were at a loss, no leads, no motive, no way of predicting where the monster would strike next. All the while, John's bloodlust only intensified with each fresh kill. He had tasted human flesh, known the ecstasy of the kill, and nothing else could sate that primal hunger now. Stalking the mist, shrouded streets under cover of darkness, John caught the scent of new prey up ahead. A young man stumbled down the sidewalk, clearly intoxicated, perfect. As the man fumbled for his keys, John struck with lightning speed, dragging him screaming into the shadows. His claws raked flesh, fangs sinking deep to tear out throats and spill crimson life onto the damp pavement. By the time John sat back, licking the last of the warm blood from his hands, the man lay dead at his feet. But for once, the kill brought him no pleasure. That gnawing emptiness remained, an endless abyss that could never be filled. He needed more, needed to make them suffer, break them body and soul before delivering the final blow. His prey would learn to fear the darkness, as all things should. The next night, John stalked a new target, a lone jogger, pounding the pavement well after dark. As the man rounded a corner, music blaring in his ears, John pounced with a savage hole. Claws and teeth tore flesh from bone, while the man screamed. But still, John did not deliver the killing stroke. Instead, he dragged his broken, bleeding prey into the depths of an abandoned building. Walls scrawled with cryptic messages left by the city's lost souls. There, in that place of madness and decay, John would break this man fully before allowing death's sweet release. Hours passed as the jogger's screams echoed through the dilapidated halls, mingling with John's demented laughter. By dawn, the man lay in a shattered, whimpering heap, begging for the end through torn lips. John leaned down with a grin, savoring the moment, and snapped the man's neck with a careless twist, tossing the broken body aside. Another soul to join this place of shadows, fuel for the darkness that now lived within John's bones. Let all who entered these walls know true terror before their end. The next morning, Marx and his team arrived at the scene of the latest grisly discovery, a derelict building they'd cleared of junkies and squatters just weeks ago. Now, an abattoir of carnage. The coroner blanched at the state of the body mangled almost beyond recognition. Whoever or whatever did this took their time inflicting maximum damage, both physical and psychological. They weren't just killing. They were torturing, deriving sadistic pleasure from their victim's suffering. This thing was becoming bolder, 
more depraved with each new kill, stalking its prey for hours before finally granting the gift of death. Marx knew they were rapidly losing control of the situation. At this rate, it was only a matter of time before an entire neighborhood fell prey to this monster's insatiable bloodlust. They had to find it, and fast, before the death toll climbed even higher. But how do you track down a nightmare, given flesh, a thing that killed without reason, toyed with its victims for sport before ending their lives? As Marx surveyed the carnage with a heavy heart, he knew one thing for certain. This was a true monster they faced, a shadow given form to prey upon mankind's fears. And it would not stop until every last citizen learned to dread the coming of night. The city was gripped by panic as news of the latest killings spread. People barricaded themselves indoors after dark, too terrified to venture out alone. A dusk, dawn curfew was imposed, but it did little to quell the rising hysteria. A monster now stalked their streets, deriving sadistic pleasure from torturing its victims before delivering the final blow. And with no leads on its identity or motive, the police were powerless to stop it. Detective Marx poured over case files long into the night, searching for any clue they may have missed. But the killer left no trace. It moved through the shadows like a wraith, as inhumanly fast and strong as the old man from the first attack. Could they possibly be one and the same? Marx pulled up the grainy security footage again. Though dark and blurred, there was no mistaking that shock of wild gray hair or hunched predatory movements. It had to be. A knock at the door broke his concentration. We've got a possible sighting, the officer said grimly showed Marx to the monitor room, where all security cameras fed live footage citywide. One screen displayed a dark alley, two figures entwined on the damp ground. Marx leaned in for a closer look. It was unmistakably the old man, pinning a struggling victim as he tore into flesh with teeth and claws, a savage almost frenzied quality to his movements that chilled Marx to his core. They had their location. Grabbing his weapon, Marx rallied a tactical team, and they sped towards the coordinates. Time to end this, once and for all. Slipping into the alley, Marx signaled his men to surround the area silently. Through night vision goggles, he spied the old man crouched over his victim's mangled corpse, feasting on flesh and viscera like some feral animal. It was now or never. Marx took aim, voice projecting clearly through his megaphone. It's over. Step away from the body and put your hands in the air. The old man's head snapped up with an unnatural jerk, fixing Marx with a stare that pierced straight to his soul. Nothing human remained in those eyes. Only primal, unhinged bloodlust. With an inhuman howl, he charged. Marx opened fire, bullets tearing into aged flesh. But the old man was unnaturally fast and resilient, shrugging off wounds that should have killed him. In seconds, he was on Marx, bearing him to the ground with preternatural strength. Fingers curled around Mark's throat as the old man leaned in, bearing stained teeth in a feral grin. You think you can stop me? I am the darkness. I am the darkness. With a savage twist, the old man snapped Mark's neck and tossed the body aside. Turning to face the tactical squad, he let out an ear, splitting howl that curdled their blood. Then he was on them, moving with blurring speed that defied the laws of man. Gunfire erupted as the squad opened up on full auto, but still the old man weaved between the hail of bullets with inhuman agility. One by one the men went down, torn apart by claws and fangs, before they knew what hit them. In minutes, only one man remained, Officer Blake, 
trembling as he took aim with his last clip, but it was no use. With a savage leap, the old man was on him, bearing him to the ground with preternatural strength. Hot breath ghosted Blake's face as the old man leaned in, bearing stained teeth in a feral grin. His last words were a guttural whisper. Tell them, I am death, and I am coming for them all. Then, with a savage twist, the old man snapped Blake's neck and tossed the body aside, letting out an ear, splitting howl to the moonless sky. He melted back into the shadows. His message had been delivered. None could stand against the darkness that now lived within his bones. This city and all who dwelt within were his dominion. A true monster had been unleashed, and soon this city would learn to dread the coming of night. The city was plunged into chaos after the massacre in the alley. Word of the monster's unstoppable savagery spread like wildfire. Stoking mass hysteria, people barricaded themselves indoors, too, terrified to venture out even during daylight hours. All the while, the death toll continued to climb. Night after night, more mutilated bodies were found drained of blood, torn limb from limb, in dark corners across the city. The police were powerless to stop the rampage of the thing. The police were powerless to stop the rampage of the thing that was once a man. A true monster now stalked the streets, killing for sport, deriving sadistic pleasure from its victim's suffering. And with its preternatural speed, strength, and resilience, it seemed nothing could kill this beast. The governor declared a state of emergency, mobilizing the National Guard in a desperate bid to regain control but even their firepower and tactics proved useless against a foe that felt no pain and knew no limits. As the nights passed in a blur of blood, the monster's kills grew ever more depraved and brutal. It was toying with its prey now, breaking bodies and minds slowly before finally granting the gift of death. All hope seemed lost as the death toll soared into the hundreds. This city, and all who lived within, belonged to the monster now. It had become death incarnate, a shadow given flesh and fangs to rend the living. Then, one night, the killing suddenly stopped. The monster vanished without a trace, as if it had never existed at all. An eerie silence fell over the empty fog, shrouded streets. Weeks passed without further incident. Gradually, cautiously, life began to resume its former rhythms. The city started rebuilding, scars of the nightmare slowly fading with time. All thought the threat had passed, the beast slain or fled. But they were wrong. Deep in the ruins on the city outskirts, the monster's lair lay hidden, waiting. It had retreated to lick its wounds and sate its bloodlust on rats and stray dogs. Now, with flesh knitted and strength renewed, the time had come to emerge once more, to reclaim what was rightfully its dominion. That night, as the full moon rose over the ruins, an inhuman howl split the darkness, carrying for miles on the chill breeze. An ominous warning to all who heard, the monster was not done. Its legacy of terror was only just beginning. As the howl faded into the night, a lone pair of eyes glinted from the shadows, watching, waiting. Savoring the fear and panic its cry would soon unleash upon the streets. This city and all who lived within were still its playthings, and the game had only just begun. 